Uh, this is the original model to the Botany Bay, which is uh, Khan's ship from Space Sea, the original series episode. Comes back, obviously, in Wrath of Khan. Uh, Greg had the original 60s Trek model. He's got the original drawing for what's called the obsolete Tramp Space Freighter. I love that. Uh, and this kind of takes us to kind of the, the Trek section, if you will. And it's a little bit all over the place because there's original series mixed in with next gen and whatnot, but it's all fantastic. I want to jump a little bit. We're going to kind of jump around, but I want to just talk about original series for a second. Um, so we've got here, this is a, uh, I don't know what season Spock. Oh, this is a, I think this is a second season Spock. That's an Uhura. This is a third season Kirk. That's Mirror Mirror Kirk. That's the wraparound first season wraparound Kirk. And that's the Admiral Kirk, which he wears, you know, in episodes like Journey to Babel and stuff. Um, you know, the Kirks, the Spocks, the McCoys, I think it's everybody but Chekhov is in this catalog. Multiples from every uh, year of the series and every variation. So you can have, uh, we're gonna look in a minute at like McCoy season one, McCoy season two. The options are all there to build a bridge. I need a McCoy very badly. I'm not necessarily a picky person. Could be season one, could be season two. I just need a McCoy. Uh, this is Spock's crazy Vulcan. And there's something someone pointed out to me that is very, very cool. Check this out. Copyright 1969, Paramount Pictures Corporation. I don't know if that means they were going to make a toy. I don't know if Lincoln Enterprises was going to was going to sell this, or I don't know if they were trying to stop. But this is his uh, his beautiful uh, lute, harp, whatever. I don't know. It probably has a name that I should know, but I don't know. Um, and it's really and, and it works. I mean, if you are a music fan, I mean, listen to this. I'm going so light because I really don't want to break this also, but. Oh, Ryan, you missed out on another incredible prop adventure. Maybe not as good as the Lucasfilm archives, but still better than what you're doing. That is logic like a Vulcan. That's also copyrighted. Did somebody say Klingon Birds of Prey? Uh, this one is from Next Gen. Uh, and I believe, I want to say, I think that Greg built this. I think, I think, I think. Um, just, just a gorgeous, I'm going to be so careful with it. Look at this. I mean, just a beautiful, used in a couple of, multiple, multiple episodes, Bird of Prey. Please don't break, please don't break, please don't break. I love this design, I love this ship. Uh, I just love how different it is, the, you know, the, the bird aspect, how different it is than the Enterprise. I just love it. We've got, I'm gonna go very careful, very careful, very careful, very careful, and I bought it. Um, this is from Star Trek Phase Two. This was a prototype that they were gonna do when they were gonna do Phase Two. This is a Klingon disruptor uh, nice and heavy from, uh, I think, you know, I honestly don't know if this is movies or next gen, but this is the later Klingons, if you will, uh, as opposed to the piece we saw earlier, but just fantastic. I just, again, love the design. Um, just really nice. Uh, from my favorite Wrath of Khan from SETI Alpha 6 or SETI Alpha 5, this is SETI Alpha 6 or 5, I never remember. Uh, you got the little the, they're only living inhabitants. It just uh, love that piece. This is Kirk William Shatner's away uniform jacket from Wrath of Khan. I've been looking for this for I'm 53 years old. For 50 years, I've been looking for this piece from before there was Wrath of Khan. Uh, I love this thing. It is so great. It's got this crazy compartment here for the tricorder, uh, for phasers and whatnot. I love the look, all of those sort of almost vaguely nautical kind of like ship things that Nick Meyer brought to this thing. Um, I love this. It's Captain Kirk's. I, it's just, it's probably of the Star Trek stuff, 
uh, certainly of the movie stuff, it's my absolute favorite piece in the auction. There's other good movie stuff. Come on over here. There's other Wrath of Khan stuff that I want to sort of, uh, oh, this is the tricorder. This is what I wanted to show. This is the Wrath of Khan tricorder that Savic uses when they go down to regular one. And look at that. Look at it. Watch this. Ready? Lights up. Look at that. Look at that. I never, never seen one of these. Never knew there was one. Had to have been a hero. There's probably only like a couple of these. Probably only one that worked, my guess is. That's just a guess. That's not fact. Um, the second Star Trek movie, Wrath of Khan, made on a budget. Not a lot of duplicates, as they say. And here it is, as held by uh, Kirstie Alley, the late Kirstie Alley, uh, Mr. Savick. I love this thing. They've got this and a couple of phasers in the auction, which are kind of incredible, from Wrath of Khan. That's Kirk's spacesuit from uh, the motion picture, from when I think they go out into V'ger. Uh, this is from the newer Star Trek. This is one of the hero uh, phasers from the Chris Pine Star Trek or the J.J. Abrams Star Trek. And this has the, it turns, so there's stun. And then there's, whoop, that's pretty good though. Look at that. My son is studying energy uh, in, uh, in school and... Uh, it has a nice mechanism that he could study. So uh, set for stun and kill, but love this. The machine work on this is just gorgeous. I visited the Star Trek set many, many, many years ago. Uh, my, bro my, my friend, Brian Burke, uh, was one of the producers on it, and they had these things under lock and key in a case, which is great. So well done, Greg. Um, space Shuttle. Um, this is from Voyager. This is part of Greg Jean's every shuttle from Star Trek you ever wanted that you didn't know you wanted. Just, just wonderful, insane studio miniature uh, with two different, I think, different numbers on either side so they could use it for multiple things. I think this is that one or it's one of the other ones. I love it, though. This is from Voyager. This is a mock-up that I believe Greg built himself um, at when they were figuring out the designs of the ship, just, just again, I, I just keep, I apologize in advance that I don't have a thesaurus for other words for wonderful, but this, again, a collection like I've never seen, the Surak from Star Trek One. This is the shuttle, so to speak, that brings Spock to the Enterprise about midway through the movie when they pushed a big suitcase of money at Leonard Nimoy and said, are you sure you don't want to be in the movie? You can kind of come in in the middle and you can only, you can work like half the time. And he said, yes, build me a ship. The Surak, uh, just, just again, spectacular. So just a beautiful, the Klingon disruptor. I mean, look at this thing, wood, metal. It's nothing. It's everything. Um, the Star Trek hand props, I mean, Greg could not be outdone with this part of his collection. And to see this stuff, again, look at this all in one place. Just look at the all in one place of this. I'm gonna put this guy down for a second. I mean, we have cell phones and they work the way they do, I think sometimes because of this. Uh, Communicator original series with, sorry, the Velcro to attach to the belt hailing frequencies open. Look at this bad boy. I, I just, you know, I, 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 incredible just to see it all here in an all-in-one room. And I feel like I, I want to go this way, but I got to go this way because, again, got to be a little careful, but look at this. Uh, the phaser. I don't like that. Look at this. Look at this. I don't want to do anything that makes me buy this, but let's see. I mean, 60s Trek. And again, there's the Velcro, so it can go on. The, the whole thing can go on the back. Uh, okay, press that. Push this in. And then run for the door. I'm going to let someone put this else back together so that I don't buy this thing. <laughs> Come over here a second. From the cage, 
Again, if you are a Star Trek fan, it's worth just coming down and looking at this stuff. Uh, first version of the phasers from the cage. Uh, look at this. And there's more than one of these. Uh, Ahura's Bluetooth. Her iPod, whatever they are, I... AirPods. Ahura's AirPod. Ahura's AirPod, look at that. Machined, little whatever, little uh, Michelle Nichols earwax on it still. You can clone her. Pretty incredible. A tricorder, because of course, if you've already bought the communicator and the phaser, you need a, you need a tricorder. My wife's going to yell at me according to this. So yeah, uh, pretty insane. Um, this was always fun. The intercom kind of things. Look at this, right from, uh, right from the original show. These, the memory data cards, you know, they're not, they're just, it's just yellow wood. It looks like it came off, it literally looks like it came off a bat belt and just goes put in and you get the data file. Uh, just, just, just wild. Uh, check this out. Oh my God. I mean, how do you have this? How does he have this? Uh, oh my God, I love this. Button presses. Oh man, look at the work on this, the grill, these pieces. And these things, uh, we were talking to our friend Rob Klein, who's a bit of a original series expert. These things pop up in other episodes. I think one of these at one point is in Dr. McCoy's med kit or something he said. So these things make many appearances in the world of Star Trek as a futuristic uh, prop. And then probably the piece de resistance of the Greg Jean original series collection. We have three different sizes of William Shatner's hairpiece. Um, this was a season one, that's season two, and that's season three after the hair transplant. So, I mean, what Star Trek collection is complete without those? Come on. So, USS Enterprise plaque Enterprise E, NCC 1701E, which I think makes this first contact because I think the Enterprise got blown up for the eighth time in the previous movie. The thing that's always really fun, and you can see it on there, is of course all the names are crew people and whatever. So there's Rick Berman, Jonathan Frakes, Michael Piller. So they're all kind of there. Chief of Staff, Gene Roddenberry. It's just kind of, I don't know, sort of fun. And then a one of the later Star Treks, I honestly don't know if it's Next Gen or Voyager. It's in the catalog, but I just always would look like the way that these things look. There's no electronics in this one, I don't think. Let's see, no. So this one is not one of the ones that has a, a battery in it where it lights up and stuff, but uh, just a nice, nice little hand prop for your uh, display case. Just very fun. So now we're talking Next Gen because it doesn't stop. Uh, and this is something that I know I've heard a lot of chatter about. I know Ryan's interested. A lot of people are interested in because people are just, I think, hot and heavy for Patrick Stewart. But this is a next gen from Picard uh, with the little, the little dingus, as I believe is the official term, the dingus um, uh, from uh, next gen. All the pips and whatnot. Uh, full on, you know, straighten himself out as they sit. And that jumps us to the, that jumps us to the movies of Star Trek. So we've got... Uh, Spock, of course, from uh, Voyage Home uh, with his uh, headband, or I don't know, maybe this is from the end of three. But anyway, it's that costume. It's just fantastic, kind of Vulcan, kind of monk robes. I, I enjoy it tremendously. Uh, this is from the assassination of Chancellor Gore. Khan or Gorek or Gore something or other, but anyway, uh, so the voyage. This is not Voyage Home. This is Undiscovered Country, uh, another great Nick Meyer movie, uh, and it's even got a little bit, I think, of the purple reddish blood that floats around in the scene from the assassination, which is fantastic. Yep. So yet again, another one of the fantastic reasons why I came here. This is the hero. Uh, Wrath of Khan phaser uh, with uh, the button. See, you, 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 you. This is, you know, the hero one. Uh, I've seen stunts, and by the way, here are some stunts. We'll get to those in a second. 
But uh, again, another one of these Wrath of Khan pieces I have been looking for forever. And of course, Greg Jean had it. Uh, I think there were lights that worked, but I don't think they work anymore. But I'm sure you could take that open and there's probably a battery of some sort that could go in there. Uh, you know, it's basically just like, you know, cheap plastic. It's light as can be. It's not metal. It's nothing great. And yet, of course, it is the greatest thing in the world. Uh, uh, truly fantastic. And then this lot, which is, do I have the lot number? 89272, which has not one, but two stunts in it. They're slightly different color. So one is probably maybe from the motion picture, maybe, because we think these things were mixed together. So there's some slight differences with like, this doesn't have that, maybe it came off. But as you can see, let's just go hero, uh, these two, which kind of match more, if you will. Yeah, I wonder if that's actually just more motion picture and that these should be in separate lots. Well, possibly your game, but again, no button, obviously no electronics. And not that this is really any heavier, but you can see it's a little thicker probably because it had some stuff, some guts inside of it. This light, although this one is missing, but still pretty just fantastic. Uh, God, uh, like I said, I have one of these. This is just super special. And again, Wrath of Khan, someday when I am sadly done, when I'm put out to pasture in my writing career, uh, and I'm put out to pasture here on my podcasting career, uh, I am going to teach screenwriting. And when I teach screenwriting, I am going to teach Wrath of Khan. It is a wonderful midlife crisis story that happens to be taking place in outer space. And I will fight anyone that disagrees with that. Uh, sign up now for my screenwriting class. Let me know if you're interested. If you're an accredited university and you'd like to hire me to teach that class, uh, I will do it if you buy me this. So I asked them to pull this out a special for me. This is a season two McCoy. So basically, I'm gonna have to be very careful with this. We're gonna go like this. This is a season two Dr. McCoy from the Greg Jean collection. And then this, which I'll probably keep in here, is the season one. And you can see the differences. I'm gonna be very careful. You can see. Oh. You know, it's differences in the materials in the collar. Uh, but this one has, back to this one, this is the season one, it's got that. It's got, it's got braid on it, which is really nice. This one has braid, you see the braid? I'm not gonna, I guess I can unfold it a little bit. It's got that. Both really nice. I mean, this material is not forgiving, but uh, pretty, pretty fantastic. He was a thin guy. I believe I'm a bigger gentleman than him. So not to be worn, but uh, for me, the opportunity, and this is something that I feel like is really important in collecting where, again, I'm not sure I set out to have the trinity of Kirk, Spock, and McCoy. I think at one point I had a Spock and then a Kirk came along and then you start to go, oh, I'd like to have a McCoy. And this is the chance. This is, this is to me, this is what collecting is about, which is to say, I'm not sure McCoy is anybody's first choice, although I'd like to think there are people out there that became doctors because of Dr. McCoy or whatever, whatever. But the opportunity to basically add the McCoy to have the three, and of course I'll be bidding against people that are probably trying to just buy an instant collection, but uh, this is here and this is great and a, a couple of shots for a McCoy, so I'm gonna take one. Damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not a prop collector.